Hello everyone, if you're new to the channel, my name is Aaron and today we're going to be starting a new, maybe not a series, but I'm calling it Building Blocks because it's sort of like what I wanted when I was learning how to program. Back then, or I guess more recently, it's mostly just like syntax and they walk you through how to build some websites and some apps. But a lot of the time when you're programming like something on your own, you're gonna wanna use specific APIs that fit your needs and your use cases. And they don't really teach you how to use everything that you're gonna need for your applications. So this is gonna sort of be teaching you how to learn these things on your own and how to implement basically anything into your web application so that you can take a bunch of them and add them all in and create your own unique applications or use them for whatever you're working on before. So what we're gonna be building today is going to be a boilerplate Next.js application and what we're gonna be doing is streaming video to that app from the cloud and for cloud we're using Amazon's S3 and CloudFront for distribution. So without further ado, let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna to need to create an AWS account to use it for S3. And so if you can go to the AWS website and sign up, it's free to sign up and you have to put in a credit card, but they shouldn't charge you any money depending on your usage. For this tutorial, they won't be charging you any money and there is also a pretty generous free tier involved. So I wouldn't worry too much about the price just yet. Uh, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. So AWS's CAPTCHA finally let me log in, and this is what you should see on your S3 console. And if this isn't what you see, it should be pretty simple to navigate to the S3 service. So it might look a tiny bit different just because I think they're updating the UI or they're in process of updating and they might be doing some A-B testing and things like that. Basically what you wanna do is come down here and click Create Bucket. And we're gonna name this Video Streaming Tutorial. And you want to select the uh, region that's closest to where you are currently, just for simplicity's sake. Um, for me, that's going to be US West 1. For you, it could be anywhere, really. I'm not sure. And you want to keep most of these settings the same, uh, specifically block public access. You want it to be set to block all public access. And the main reason behind blocking all public access is that you don't want random people just accessing what's in your S3 bucket because it could be things that you don't want people to view. It could be private things. It could just be user data, things like that. And so by blocking all public access, even though you might be asking yourself, Oh, aren't we going to be streaming video to our users? How are they going to view it if we're blocking all public access? That's the beauty of using CloudFront for distribution. And that means that people will actually be streaming from CloudFront, which has access to our S3 bucket, and so they can bypass it. So you want to keep the rest of these settings the same for now, and click Create Bucket. So now that you've created your S3 bucket successfully, we're going to be adding a video that we will stream to our web app. So you click on your bucket, it should say object zero if this is a new bucket because you don't have any files or videos uploaded yet. And I have this big orange upload button, but you might have something in here that says upload or it might look a little bit different. But basically you wanna click upload and then add files. I have a video picked out, it's one that I uploaded a few weeks ago I believe. And then after you click that, you want to go ahead and click upload in the big orange button. And I will get back to you guys when this is finished. So as you can see, our video has been successfully uploaded to our S3 bucket. And now we're going to work on configuring our CloudFront. So we're going to go to the CloudFront console in a new tab. And I'll put the link for this in the description. Or you can navigate to the CloudFront console from the AWS website in general. So after you've logged into the CloudFront console, you want to go down here to Origin Access Identities under the Security tab. And you're going to want to create a new Origin Access Identity. And we're going to name this uh, Video Video OAI for Origin Access Identity. So now that we have our Origin Access Identity down here, we're going to go back up to the Distributions tab and we want to now create a distribution. You wanna go ahead and for the origin domain, we're gonna choose the S3 bucket that we created originally for the tutorial. Uh, you don't need an origin path and the name is fine for now. Uh, we do want to use OAI, uh, which is gonna be our origin access identity that we just created in the last step. So we'll choose the video OAI. 
and our we do want to update the bucket policy. What updating the bucket policy is going to do is going to allow our CloudFront distribution to access the videos and files in our S3 bucket, and it will do that automatically if we click yes, update the bucket policy. Uh, a lot of this stuff you can leave as default. Uh, we want to redirect HTTP to HTTPS under the viewer protocol policy, which will make sure that when people view our video, it'll be under a secured connection. And there are a lot of other settings that you can play with in the uh, CloudFront distribution, but we're gonna leave all of them as default for now. And go ahead and click create distribution. Awesome, so it looks like we have successfully created our new distribution. And you wanna wait until this last modified value here so that it is finished deploying. And uh, then we'll be able to move on to our next step. Okay, so it looks like our last modified is the current date, which means that our CloudFront distribution is live and on the internet. And so we want to head back to our S3 console and back to the buckets tab and back into the bucket we created, right? Video streaming tutorial, click on the name. And now we want to head on over to the permissions tab and all the way down to bucket policy. So if your bucket policy does not look like this, then your CloudFront distribution will not be able to view the videos and access the videos in your S3 bucket, which as you can imagine, is gonna be a bit problematic since you're trying to serve videos through CloudFront from your S3 bucket. So make sure that your uh, bucket policy looks like this. And if it doesn't, go ahead and try remaking your distribution or maybe your S3 bucket from the earlier steps that we talked about. So you might be asking yourself, why are we using CloudFront instead of just serving video directly from our S3 bucket? And the reason for that is that CloudFront is something called a content distribution network. So the idea behind it is that, remember when we chose our S3 location and it was US West 1 for myself? So if there's somebody in China or say Israel trying to stream that video, it would take a long time or it would take longer than if it was being served like right next to them. So constant distribution networks basically cache your videos in different places around the world so they're able to be served faster to anywhere that you need them. And so that's what CloudFront is. And that's why we're going to be using it to serve our videos. Because in a real life application scenario, you would be using a content distribution network so that your users experience the least latency possible when they're viewing your videos. This has to do with things like pleasing the customer and keeping users engaged for as long as possible because it makes for just a better user experience in general. So now that we have our bucket policy figured out, you want to head on over back to the CloudFront Distributions tab. Uh, you just want to click on Distributions if this isn't what you see. Uh, so we're interested in the video streaming tutorials origin and you want to widen this domain name uh, column and you want to hit control copy make a new tab and put it in there and head back to your S3 console and click on the bucket that we created and then you want to click on the video that we're interested in serving the key value in the object overview is what we're going to be using as the path for our URL that we just copy and paste. So if you have your CloudFront URL and you paste the key, it should service our video. So a lot of people have come to me asking. That's enough of that. And so basically what we're now gonna be doing is hooking it up to our web application in Next.js. So let's open up a new terminal and we will start a new project. So let's go and do npx create next app add latest and we're going to be using the typescript tag at the end here and so what this will do is create a boilerplate uh, next.js application um, it's going to ask us what the name should be and we're going to name it video streaming tutorial and all the code will be in github after this video if you guys are interested in looking at it and seeing how it works but this is pretty much just going to be an example and to show you that it will be served and it can be served on an application after we put it in the S3 bucket that has CloudFront serving. And so now what we also want to do is cd into it, into our project, and then we want to do yarn add react player, which is going to be the video player that we'll be using for the purpose of this video. And so now I'm going to do code dot, which is going to open my VS code to this project. Okay, so this should be a boilerplate Next.js application with TypeScript and Yarn. 
and we're going to head on over to pages index and let me just show you guys what it looks like um, yeah so I'll show you guys what it looks like we're going to run yarn dev which will put our application onto localhost on 3000 And this is what a boilerplate Next.js application looks like from Vercel. So heading back to our VS code, uh, everything in main we're going to delete. So now with our main empty, we're going to make a React player component with the URL being equal to the URL from our CloudFront distribution. Um, just copy that from my CloudFront page. And then our key comes after that, so it's lead code 2022.mp4 for myself. That's going to be our URL. And then we want to have controls equal to true, uh, which will give our video player controls so that people can control it, whether or not it's playing. Uh, and now we're going to import React Player from React Player. And now if we go back to our page, the video should be available to play. So you might run into this error. And basically what happens is uh, with and basically what happens is with Next.js, it's server-side rendering. And so you can't play a video on a server, obviously, right? Because there's no UI. And so what we do to change this is we're gonna populate a component on page load or on component mount. And if you don't know what that means, then you should probably review some uh, React, but we're going to be using use state and use effect here. Um, and we're going to import those from React. React. So we're going to make const video and set video equal to use state any null at first and we're going to do a use effect with an empty dependency array down here and what we're going to do on page mount so because we're using an empty dependency array on page mount we're going to set video to uh, our react player component now by doing this Use effect will only activate when our page loads on an actual UI in browser and not on the server. And so we're going to replace our component, our video. So we're going to replace our video playing component with our video use state variable constant, with our video use state constant, and this should fix our problem. And sure enough, our video is still not working, and this might start to drive you crazy. And I spent a lot of time actually trying to get this to work, and it actually came down to not having HTTPS colon slash slash in the URL for the CloudFront video. So I figured I would save you guys some time and tell you that, because it took me quite a while to figure that one out. And that's just one of those facepalm moments as a programmer, but we just learned to deal with it. So a lot of people have come. And so now our video should work on our Next.js application. So that's going to wrap up our video for today. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more building block type videos or if you want to see full, full stack tutorials because those take a bit longer to make. So I wanted to make something like this kind of just to test the waters and see if you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and a comment and let me know what you enjoyed and what you didn't. And be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more content like this. Thank you so much and I hope you all have a great day.